UCLA mentors, welcome to Los Angeles Teen Mentoring. We are so excited to be partnering with you this year. Well, part of our partnership is to give you a curriculum that you can utilize when you're working with your kids. So we're going to start off. I've got a lot of great activities that we've outlined for you, but we're going to start off with some name games. Um, so just to give you a little insight, many times when you're working with kids for the first time, they're going to be a little shy, a little reserved, and it's going to take them a minute to open up. But hopefully we've laid out some great activities for you to break the ice and get them warmed up so that you can have some fun. So as I said to you earlier, we're starting off with those name games. And just to give you a little context, just to kind of um, guide you through the activities that we're utilizing today, um, I'll give you some background on why these activities have been chosen. Uh, so number one, the name games, so learning each other's names is really important. I'm sure you understand that. Um, it shows respect. It makes you more approachable, of course, because people can come up to you or you can come up to your students and know their names. Helps with getting students' attention. And there are going to be those times where um, once they do get comfortable with you, you might need to call their names so that you can you know, direct them um, and get them to refocus. And then it personalizes, it helps personalize conversation just like it does in your adult life. And last but not least, the most important reason why it's really good to learn names is that it shows that you are invested. Because you're taking that minute, you're taking that time for your short-term memory uh, to learn their names. So that is the value of the name games. So I've got some name games for you, some things that you can do with your kids to help you memorize their names and for them to help you memorize your name. All right, so you're going to get some name tags, some good old household everyday name tags. And on those name tags, I'm going to introduce you to someone who's going to um, act as one of our students, one of Los Angeles Team Mentoring's very own program coordinators, Melissa Pacheco. Round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. All right, Melissa. So we're going to get some name tags. Once you get your name tag, um, you are going to write three objects. You're going to illustrate three objects, and then you're going to write your name at the bottom. Three objects that represent who you are. Three objects that represent who you are. So you'll pass out a name tag to each of your students, and you'll have them you know, draw three objects that represent them. You'll give them some markers. You'll give them a pen or whatnot. Give them a name tag and have them go for it. So Melissa, let's take a minute. Okay. All right, we're taking a minute here. Drawing our name tags. Melissa, don't forget to put your name. Um, all right, we're all ready to go. So, if I were a student on your team, um, Melissa, you're out of shot. Get in the shot, Melissa. If I were a student on your team, um, this is how I would introduce myself. So, I put a dumbbell, not because I'm a dummy, but a dumbbell because I like to work out. I put a little dog um, because I love walking my dog. And then I put pizza. Um, hard to believe, right? I like to work out and eat pizza. Uh, so anyway, pizza is mine, and I would say those are my three objects, and my name is Will. How about you? Well, Will, my name is Melissa, and I put water um, because I really like the beach. I like uh, the whole water. It feels very zen to me. I also put a pizza because Italian food is one of my favorites, and I put a little note with uh, check boxes because I feel like I'm very like task oriented. Very nice, and I just learned that Melissa likes pizza, so tomorrow we're having pizza for lunch. Alrighty, so you see, kids will get to even learn things about each other. Probably kids that they spend time with all day long in the classroom, and they probably didn't even know that they had these commonalities. So it's a great way for kids to get to know each other, warm them up. Now, i got another food game name game for you. It's called the food name game. So the first one was Name Tag Mania. Now the next one is called the food name game. This one's pretty simple. You can do it seated in a circle or standing in a circle. Um, but uh, the whole point of this one is, is to get each other's names, but this is how we do it. Um, so my name starts with a W, of course. So the first initial of your name is key. First initial of your name. Now I've got to find a food that also starts with the same letter as the first initial of my name, right? Uh, first initial of your name, food that starts with the same letter. So, for example, I can say, I am Will Wasabi. So I'm Will Wasabi. So the next person would then do their food name with their name and then introduce me. So as we're going around the circle, everyone is introducing everybody who went before them, right? So by the time you get to that ninth or tenth person, they got to remember nine or ten names, okay? So keep that in mind. Everybody's got to uh, introduce everybody who went before them as they introduce themselves as well. So we're going to give it a shot. Melissa and I are going to pretend we're students. So 
Hi, my name is Will Walnut. Hi, Will Walnut. My name is Melissa Macaroni. And if I were on the other side, let's switch over and then I would say, uh, Hi, Melissa Macaroni. Hi, Will Walnut. My name is Patrick Pretzel. All right, so you guys see how that goes? Pretty simple. Um, so again, that was Name Tag Mania, uh, Food Name Game, no materials required for Food Name Game, and now we're going to go into questions of the day. So again, you can stay in your circle if you'd like, but the questions of the day, here's the point of the questions of the day. All right, you'll open the door to start creating dialogue. You'll create a safe environment so as the kids are starting to talk, they're going to start to open up, they're going to start to trust, so it'll create that environment of, of you know, it's a safe place to open up. You'll build on the concept of empathy, as some of these questions are going to generate some dialogue, and kids are going to learn from each other, see different viewpoints, start to understand each other. And then, again, as I said to you before, that trust that you're going to build the trust within the group. So here's some questions for you, just to get the conversation going. If you're working with younger kids, um, here's a fun one. Would you rather give up your favorite food forever or television for five years? or television for five years. Wow, that's a tough one. Um, if you have your middle school students, the kids are kind of in the middle, would you rather be invisible or able to read minds? I think I would wish I could read minds. And then if you have some older kids, maybe would you rather have a job that you love making minimum wage or have a job that you hate making 200,000 a year? So there are 10 questions there for you, um, but it's just to get that conversation going, getting the kids feel like it's a safe, nurturing environment so that they can open up and you can have a good time. All right, now we're going to go to energizers. What is the point of energizers? Well, um, not sure what kind of team you're going to have. Again, they might be a little shy on the front end, but as they start to feel more comfortable, um, you might have to focus the energy. So the purpose of energizers is to focus students. Um, you're either going to be trying to bring your energy up or you're going to be trying to bring your energy down. Just depends what kind of group of kids you've got. And then you're going to start to build that group cohesion. And of course, you want them to start to feel like a team, like a unit. Um, team building is really key. It's a great skill to build with the kids. Um, and don't forget, while you're doing these energizers and, and the, the next few activities, don't forget to keep conversating with the kids. Conversation is a great way. Um, to kind of connect and bond with the kids, build relationships with the kids. All right, so here's some energizers. I'm going to bring back Melissa, and you guys have all done rock, paper, scissors. Who we'll use a variation of rock, paper, scissors. It's called bear mosquito salmon, bear mosquito salmon, all right? And it's this simple. Um, they are going to, you know, uh, act out, pantomime these three different animals. So if it's a bear, the bear goes, Arr. can you do that, Melissa? Uh Urgh. All right, if it's a mosquito, they're going to go bzzz. Good job, Melissa. <laughs> um, if it's a salmon, they're going to put their hands over the head and wiggle like a fish out of water. All right, we got it, Melissa? Got it. All right, so you might need to provide a little key uh, just because, you know, we all forget every once in a while, but just in case, uh, I've printed out just some good old-fashioned clip word art, um, and then I wrote at the bottom, who, whatever. So a bear eats the salmon, right? We see bears in the stream picking salmon all the time. Uh, mosquitoes, malaria, that's a big deal. Uh, they kill the bear, and then we've got the salmon who eats bugs, eats mosquitoes, all right? Bear eats the fish. The mosquito kills the bear because of malaria, and uh, the fish eats the mosquito, all right? So that's simple, all right? So you'll stand your, your students in two lines uh, facing each other just like this. And then when you say go, you say go. So ready, go. Arr, oh, all right, we cancel each other out on that one. All right, ready, go. Whoa. All right, one more. Uh, ready, go. Arr, uh, so uh, she was a salmon, and the bear eats the salmon. So I won that round. Woo! Thank you, thank you. All righty, so now we're going to move on. The next one is our story. Our story is pretty simple. You're going to have your kids sit down in a circle again. You're going to give them all a blank piece of paper. You can also give them some markers or some pens. And then you're going to instruct your students to draw a person, place, or thing. A person, place, or thing. So just one thing per page. Draw a person, place, or thing. An object. All right? So don't give them any more information than that. So Melissa, how about you draw something? Okay. Here's some paper for you. I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to draw a person, place, or thing as well. All right. All right. So I'm done with mine. Afterwards, 
have your students then come up to, uh, you know, a chalkboard or a whiteboard or some blank space in the room. Here, Melissa, here's some tape for you as well. And then have them tape on have them tabled on the wall. And it doesn't matter what the formation is, but have them tabled on the wall. All right? So again, we're trying to build group cohesion. And here's a perfect way of building group cohesion. Once everyone has drawn their person, place, or thing, their object, you're going to tape them on the wall. And now you're going to ask the students, whoever is their drawing, ask them to build a story. So now we've got to build a story. So you can do this in one large group, or you can do it in two smaller groups. It's your choice. Um, but what our whole point is, is now to make sense of all these different uh, places, uh, people, places, and things. So I'm going to take a stab at it, Melissa. Let's take a stab at it. All right. Um, I woke up this morning and I washed my face and brushed my teeth in the sink. Um, and then I was walking out of my house and in my garden I picked a beautiful flower for my mom. After I picked the flower for my mom, I got into my car and drove down to the marina to jump on a sailboat. Nice. Good job, Melissa. So there you go. That's our story. That's the activity, our story. All right, our next activity is called our team tower. So you definitely got to break your students up into two teams. This is the main activity. Oh, we're losing, we're losing objects behind me. Um, and so just to kind of give you some context about the main activities, the purpose of the main activities, of course, is to really get the kids to start teaming up to inspire cooperation and really to motivate them. And we love motivating our young people, okay? So to motivate them. So don't forget to acknowledge team performance. So when the team is doing really well, don't forget to acknowledge the team performance. Don't forget while you're doing everything, all the activities, when kids are saying great stuff, bring, call attention to it. Uh, when they're successful at something, call attention to it. We really want to kind of build their self-esteem through these activities. So you got lots of material here to always, you know, call out some great stuff, all right? So don't keep, uh, keep that in mind. Don't forget about that. Always acknowledge the good stuff. All right, break them up into two teams. You'll have two separate bags. In the bags will be a bunch of random materials like construction paper, pipe cleaners, um, aluminum foil, index cards, Dixie cups, straws, um, popsicle sticks. Pretty random, right? Well, the whole point is in these two groups are going to have a competition. And the competition is who can build the tallest freestanding structure in uh, whatever, a lot of period of time. So based on your time schedule, usually about 30 minutes is a good time frame. Um, but it doesn't matter. Any time frame can work. And what they're going to have to do is kind of collectively work together as a group and brainstorm, build it. So make sure they're all on an equal uh, flat surface and then build their structure up. So you'll see the kids doing all kinds of things like rolling their construction paper and, and rolling it and they'll start to tape it or they'll create a base and they'll build up and up and up. And I forgot to mention, they'll be taped in there as well. And that's our team tower. It's a team competition using these odds and end materials to see who can uh, build the tallest structure that can support and self-support itself. And then when you say stop, everybody's hands off. And then you see who's, uh, who's the tallest and who's able to stand on their own. Hopefully there'll be no earthquakes that day. Um, joking. Inventor Gadget is your next one. And this one's really fun. I'm sure you guys have seen infomercials. Some of you night owls, you guys are all students, you're probably all up late studying. But Inspector Gadget is that, just that. Um, they're going to create, they're going to get a box of random materials yet again. We love using random materials. And in there, they're going to create a new product, a new gadget, a new product, the latest, hottest thing um, that someone's got to have, like either that hair clip thing or the the snuggy thing or whatever it may be. So they'll get all these random items. And again, this is very similar to the other one, straws, construction, paper markers, pipe cleaners and they've got to create a gadget and an infomercial. So there's two parts of this. They've got to come up with a name for their product. They've got to come up with the product, so they've got to make it, and then they've got to create uh, an infomercial. And we have a whole infomercial worksheet without going into great detail. Great prompts here. Identify your product. What will it cost? Um, is there a buy it now and receive an extra item? So stay up a little late before you come out to your session so you can really get a good grasp on those those cheesy infomercials, which are really fun. But anyway, I have a Snuggie, so they actually must really work. So that's Inspector Gadget. All right, if you've got older kids, or you've got kids who are really chatty and you're noticing, wow, these kids love to talk, we've got a great activity. It's called Four Corners. Some of you may have done this while you were in high school, but Four Corners is you'll put 
um, uh, these signs around your room, and they really are to reflect your opinion. Like, do you agree with something, strongly agree with something, disagree, or strongly disagree, so on and so forth. So you'll spread these out in four corners in the room, and then you'll have all your kids stand in the middle, and simply you'll read a statement out loud, and then depending on how they feel or how they see that, that, that statement, they'll go stand under it. So let's say, um, let's say the question is, or the statement is, having money is important to be happy. Having money is important to be happy. So maybe some kids will say they agree or strongly agree or disagree or whatnot. And then once they all kind of get in their little groups, then ask each group to elaborate. Like, why did they stand in there? Tell us a little more. Now, you might have some kids who are just going to stand in the middle because they're a little indifferent and they don't know. But ask the kids who are standing in the middle also, like, why are you kind of in the middle on this, on this statement or on this topic? Another one is students shouldn't be allowed to have cell phones at school. It's OK to cheat if you don't get caught. So we've got some really good thought-provoking um, activities in there. So really think about their statements, I should say. Really thought-provoking statements. I love these kind of activities. They generate a lot of stimulating conversation. It really uh, you know, stirs up that provocative thought. You can have some great conversation. All right. So those were uh, basically your energizers, your name games, your main activities. And then closure. Closure is really important. So we have some reflection. We have a little reflection exercise. What I learned about myself or what I appreciate about today is a reflection. So sit back in your circles, either sitting or standing. And this is why reflection is so important. Creates that sense of closure, right? And then allows students to revisit and connect with the experience. Um, it also allows them an opportunity to build their communication skills as they've got to verbalize their experience. And this is my favorite part of why we do what I learned about myself, what I appreciate. It creates a habit of appreciation. It gets the kids to really be appreciative of things in life. Be appreciative of themselves or their time they're spending with others or just an experience altogether. And hopefully they are going to appreciate the time you spent with them and the experience they had with you. So you'll go in the circle and you ask each child or each student to say what they learned about themselves today or what they appreciated about today. So it can be either question or it can be both. And that's the whole point of it. Hopefully you've enjoyed all those fun activities and just want to leave you with a final thought. Thank you so much for your time and volunteering. I love UCLA. Um, but think about this. A mediocre volunteer mentor simply demonstrates but an amazing mentor, volunteer, um, inspires. All right, so think about that. I want to leave you with that note. So thank you very much. It's Will signing out.